Now you have some idea of what a limit is, and we need to talk about when does a limit exist. To illustrate my point before we get started, let's set up an example. Let's say you and a friend are going to meet for dinner, and you're meeting at a diner that's centrally located between the two of you. If you live east of the diner, and your friend lives west of the diner, and you both want to drive to meet there, ideally, the roads which lead to the diner will lead you to the same place. If you travel towards the diner from the right, or east, and they travel towards the diner from the left, you should meet up in the same place. Mathematically, this is basically what a limit is. A limit exists if you travel along a function from the left side and from the right side towards some specific value of x. As long as that function meets in the middle, as long as you arrive at the diner, as long as the heights from the right and the left are the same, then the limit exists. Now it's time to get down to the brass tacks and look at this mathematically. Take a look at the graph of this function f of x. Visually you can see that it's got a break in it at x equals 4. So if we travel towards 4 from the right, we will arrive at a height of 2. However, if you travel towards 4 from the left, you will arrive at a height of 1. This means that no limit exists for f at x equals 4. Let's go back to our diner metaphor for just a second. Notice that as I'm traveling along the road from the right, I end up at a height of 2. But if you travel along the road from the left, you end up at a height of 1. These heights don't match. We won't both arrive at the diner, and no limit exists. We call the height at which we arrive from the right the right-hand limit of f of x as x approaches 4 from the right. And we denote this with a little plus sign in our limit symbol. Our height that we arrive at from the left is called the left-hand limit of f of x as x approaches 4, and it is denoted with a little negative symbol. Mathematically, in order for a limit to exist, both the right and the left-hand limits must be equal. Now let's change this function just a little bit. This new function, we'll call g of x, does possess a limit. Can you see why that's the case? It's because the function no longer has a break at 4. Now, there's something to be said here. The previous function did not have a limit at 4. It did have a limit at many other points. For example, a limit existed at 1, at 2, at 5, at 0. All these x values showed locations where the graph did not break. In essence, a graph will not possess a limit if it breaks at the given x value. That's why our new function does possess a limit at x equals 4. Now, let's go back to our diner example one last time. Let's say we're traveling towards the diner. We both arrive at the same location, but the diner isn't there. Maybe it's caught fire or something. Does that mean the limit doesn't exist? The truth is, the limit will exist even if the diner's not there, because you still arrived at the same place. In other words, mathematically, a limit can still exist if your destination is a hole in the graph, because it doesn't matter whether or not the point is actually there. What matters is that you arrived at that point, coming from the right side and the left side. In conclusion, a limit exists on a graph if you arrive at the same height coming from both the right and the left side of the given x value.